and welcome everybody to the Daily Space Weather. I'm your host, Dan, aka smash a mash We're starting things out looking at the sun in 94 angstroms. Two active regions in the southeast. No sunspots last I checked. Not sure if 2767 ever got named or not. And you can see those bright spots right in this area at the end of the video. That's 48 hours from the SDO spacecraft. And we've got some more views for you, such as Helio Viewer, always a classic. Here are the fields that we're talking about. And yesterday we did see some Umbre associated with this. This morning, no longer there. I don't think it got named. Here's the 304 Angstrom's view. Some filaments in the southeast as well. And there's the fade back to 171 angstroms, showing you ionized helium and ionized iron. Now at once. Looking at the real-time solar wind, it looks like the activity ended right about here when we saw this phi angle and BTBZ shift. That's where things appear to have chilled out and we've gotten another pulse here in the past 12 hours. It's pretty minor. Some missing data here. Current solar wind density is around five protons per cubic, four and a half protons per cubic centimeter. Solar wind speed still slightly elevated here at 423 kilometers a second. Most likely a, an ongoing coronal hole wind stream. KP index has been at zero for the last nine hours. And today we're going to look at the density and the pressure of the magnetosphere. So here is the uh, density data. Just keep in mind that the density is shown, high density is shown in dark blue, low density is shown in white. Anyway, there's four hours of data on that. Here's the pressure, and not surprisingly, the pressure is quite low. Most of it is right now in the bow shock region, in between the Earth and the Sun. Less pressure in the magneto tail, which for you new viewers is this area right here. And let's look at the ground magnetic perturbations. Going a little bit closer to home now, showing what's going on on the planet. By the way, we are coming at you from the smash bunker. If you hear that rumbling sound, that's classified technology. Anyway, there's four hours of data ground magnetic perturbations, and we don't see many perturbations. <clears throat> and welcome to another Smash Light section, where we talk about all kinds of things, like hacks, frauds, political losers, total idiots, science, reality, fakeality. We've ordered the first merch, Smasher Price My First Pandemic, Look for that in less than two weeks. We'll be modeling it for you here. Have you learned how to say chida by talking at the top of your face? Chida. Tell your friends. Chida. It's spelled capital C-H-I-D-A. And for you Chinese people out there watching the content, we love you. We're just not fans of the Chinese Communist Party. Don't tell anybody we said so, or you could end up in a gulag. Thanks to our patrons, the real associate and assistant producers of the content. There will be a credit crawl coming one of these days. Tell your friends and your foes to help fund us and increase the probability that these videos will remain publicly visible and free. As the slightest thing could cause us to take down the whole channel at any moment. We're also on Subscribestar. And there are other links below the videos to help support us. Smash staff. We really need those Amazon links. Get on it. It's coming soon. Now, we are on Twitter, if you may have noticed. We've got hundreds and hundreds of posts. There are 1,303 tweets on Twitter. So if you're not on there, well, you can't interact with us there. We're also on Facebook and Gab and Minds and smashomash.locals.com, Dave Rubin's new site. Now, let's talk about shadow banning. As I've talked about shadow banning many, many times on the channel, 
because we mysteriously don't seem to gain any subscribers or see any views on YouTube. I guess we're just uninteresting losers. Anyway, you see this console right here? This is a leaked admin console from Twitter. Oh yeah, that's right. Look at what it says. Perm suspended, suspended, bounced, protected, compromised, trends blacklist, search blacklist. Doesn't that seem a little bit sketchy to you folks? Do you think that big tech might be manipulating things like your search results? Are you still a complete COVID idiot who uses Google as a verb and as a search engine? Stop using Google as a verb and as a search engine. When you use Google as a verb, what it really means is using the Google search engine to obtain biased search results. Speaking of biased, Twitter is biased too and so is Facebook. They're trying to interfere in the US presidential elections once again because they consider their executive staff to know more about politics and economics and literally everything in the world than you stupid idiotic plebes. So anyway, last night a massive hack happened where over $113,000 in Bitcoin has been sent. It's a complete scam. What a surprise. But now an even more sinister subplot is emerging from the ruins of Twitter's reputation which is a terrible reputation, by the way. It's down in the dumpster along with piece of crap companies like Facebook and Google who can't get out of their own way. Maybe if they would hire more attorneys instead of, maybe if they would hire less attorneys instead of not hiring, maybe if they would hire software engineers instead of attorneys, maybe their software would work. Now, these platforms, which are free, are free if you don't mind being spied on. And uh, if you think there's anything organic about things like search results in places like Google, Twitter, and Facebook, let me just share a little story with you. Back in 2011 is when I stopped using Google as a search engine. Why is that? Well, let me tell you. It's because I typed in a URL. I went to google.com, I went to their search bar, and I typed in the whole URL, http colon slash slash Name, www.nameofcompany.com. Yes, I searched for the URL. Guess how many pages deep I had to go to get the result that I was looking for? Yeah, the exact URL of a company. 12 pages deep. It might have been 14, but it was over, it was over a dozen pages deep. Why is that? It's because Google will sell you listings, creating a totally artificial bidding war about search results. Twitter does the same sort of thing. They are 100% political hacks, just like Facebook and Google. Twitter, Facebook, and Google, complete political hacks. They're using your platform to spy on you and send market data. Here's what I send market data to China to use your shopping habits to pump up Chinese retailers in China and in India. Were you aware? I guess you weren't aware. Any platform on the internet that's free makes you the product. So in any case, this Zero Hedge article is somewhat interesting. Is Twitter hiding a screenshot? Yeah, well, people have gone to Twitter jail for displaying this screenshot. Let's see if this video gets mysteriously shadow banned and banned outright. By the way, we are streaming live to Twitch. Check us out there at twitch.tv slash smashomash. If you enjoy the content on YouTube, please press the notification bell that might increase the probability that you'll actually see when we put up a video. I highly doubt it. Check out the pathetic number of views of yesterday's content. 32 views on the Daily Space Weather video. 27 views on yesterday's Smash Light segment. Absolutely pathetic. While over here on BitChute, yesterday's Daily Space Weather video sees 281 views. I'm sure that's not to be attributed to shadow bands or anything like that. By the way, if you haven't checked out smashamash.com slash forum, check that out. There's all kinds of topics there, including cosmology and earth and geophysics and general science and movie recommendations and dream logs. Thanks for commenting, Mary. She says, I've paid very little attention to the stock market or the Fed. Now I see a system that's about to fail with air money and the market artificially manipulated. I think it'll crash soon. I don't know what the effects from this will be. There's a chance for a fair system. It's about time maybe if we backed up the money with something like gold or real estate or silver and gold. 
That, along with changes in big tech, hopefully there will be jail and prison time. Yes, that's right. Why is that? Because these big tech companies are misleading their shareholders. Have you invested in Google stock so that they can affect the presidential election? Now, I know plenty of leftists, but of the ones who, who are still willing to talk to me, none of them would like to silence me. I would fight for their right to be able to say whatever they want to whoever they want, whenever they want. This is the U.S. We have this thing called the Bill of Rights, starting with things like the First Amendment, Second Amendment, etc. Now, Mary knows Michigan's economy will be like it was when the auto industry left. By the way, Big Pharma, I don't know if they're misleading their shareholders, but Big Tech is 100% guilty of securities fraud for misleading their shareholders. In any case, Detroit is still a ghost town. Flint is no better. Now, with this, Mary sees people leaving the state. She'll just wait and see. Perhaps her prices will drop as a result. Let's talk about being skeptics now. I've been skeptical of the COVID virulence since January 23rd, and one of our forum threads on smashamash.com slash forum will tell you all about it. It's over 31 pages long, and it was updated nearly every day for about three months following the beginning of this scandemic. And back then, the first thing, the very first thing that I typed about the scandemic is that coronaviruses, what are they? Are they dangerous? Not particularly for healthy people, which by the way, still holds up to this day. Have you seen me flip-flopping on anything? What's that? Not really? Well, sometimes it sucks being right all the time, especially when your life sucks as a result of completely inept, mentally handicapped politicians. So there's zero transparency. Everybody is cherry picking data to the point where they should change their last name to Bing as I am very sour and black on all of the cherry picked nonsense. Puns intentional. So be skeptical. And if you understand any of the science, fact check the ridiculous nonsense that the media is spewing out all the time, whether it's pandemic, climate change, institutional racism, or whatever new crisis they conjure next, we have a fundamental right to tenaciously defend the transparency and tolerance that constitutes science itself so that it remains among humanity's crowning achievements and so that we preserve this golden age that would astound our ancestors. By the way, your ancestors, your ancestors have survived much more serious things than this nonsense that we're experiencing right now. If you haven't checked out yesterday's Joe Rogan experience, it's a three plus hour interview with Peter Schiff, somebody who understands the real economy. And that's part of the reason why nobody on CNBC wants to talk to him. Isn't that a shame? Let's play a clip. And uh, we're a few months away from the election. You feel like it looks like Biden is moving into the direction of, of events. By the way, Peter Schiff's been saying for months that Biden will win the election. So if you're planning on sitting this one out, or you'd like to have a dementia patient as the president of the U.S., I guess Joe Biden's VP pick is kind of important. Let's cut to a clip of Peter Schiff talking, and I have no idea what this will be. This is, uh, oh, geez, it's a JRE clip. I'm not even trying to play that. Let's go to the full video here instead of these JRE clips. Which, by the way, those JRE clips is why Joe Rogan stopped doing his videos live and started recording them instead. Really? Because people were putting out his own content before he was putting it out himself. Let's see what Peter Schiff has to say. Take it away, Peter. A real economist, unlike Keynesian imbeciles, such as Paul Krugman, Nobel Prize winner. Another reason why the entire Nobel Prize organization has discredited and defamed itself. Here's Peter Schiff. If I give you a thousand dollars, how much of it is used in bureaucracy? And He's talking about taxes. And this is why Bernie Sanders' pool is always empty. Why is that? It's because Bernie Sanders tries to fill his pool by dipping, dipping a pitcher into the deep end, spilling a bunch as he stumbles around to the shallow end. That's called government waste pouring the rest in the shallow end and then blaming it on the one percent it's because of billionaires which is why we need to make the giant heaving bureaucracy much bigger so anyway check it out it's again it's over three hours of joe rogan plus peter schiff and uh it's worth sitting through 
Check it out. It's the most busted name in news. No. Speaking of the most busted name in Philadelphia, check it out. It's scumbag, slimy, putrid Mayor Jim Kenny. Yes. What's up with Jim Kenny? Well, guess what? He is a complete COVID idiot. And he's created a citywide ban on large events. Now, I've had Philadelphia boycotted since scumbag Mayor Jim Kenny went into office. I don't even remember when it was, but it's been way too long. I will not set foot within the side within the city limits of Philadelphia. Why? Because Mr. Kenny has made Philadelphia into a sanctuary city, which is a sanctuary for everybody except law-abiding tax-paying citizens. We can't wait for Jim Kenny to leave office, vacate the city, move to Mars or perhaps Venus. I heard it's lovely this time of year, Jim. Anyway, turns out that you can gather in large groups to riot and burn down buildings. Just make sure you wear masks and socially distance, but you can't have any large events. Why? Because Jim Kenny is a corrupt douchebag. Suck it, Jim Kenny. Let's talk about COVID. Since we haven't talked about COVID enough, we just talked about this moron right here, this complete idiot, Jim Kenny, douchebag. COVID-19. Yeah, let's talk about it. Let's not talk about it. Today, the ESA is going to talk about the first images from the solar orbiter. What's so important about that? This morning at 8 a.m., Thursday, July 16th, the briefing will be live on NASA's website. Here's a link to the website. This is a SciTech Daily article. So they're going to be offering the first images in only three hours. The closest images ever taken of the sun by the solar orbiter. Next, let's talk about bacteria that feed on metal. Another interesting article, article here on SciTech Daily. Turns out there's a bacteria that feeds on metal and this could lead to some extremely important breakthroughs. It looks like space, those are magnetic fields around that piece of uh, manganese, I guess, manganese oxide nodules. And uh, that's a real electron micrograph, I believe, folks. Yeah, that's a real scanning electron micrograph with false colorization. So bacteria that eat metals could have all kinds of different ramifications for human health. Uh, perhaps it's another uh, another piece to the puzzle of curing things like Alzheimer's. Fingers crossed on that one. There's a whole set of environmental engineering literature on drinking water distribution systems getting clogged by manganese oxides. So obviously implications for infrastructure improvements as well. Let's hope this technology goes the right way and does something good for mankind. By the way, congratulations on surviving a global pandemic. Look for the t-shirts coming in less than two weeks. You'll at least be able to see the prototype. Thanks for surviving a global pandemic. Again, your ancestors survived much worse catastrophes. And here ends today's Smash Lights. Thanks for tuning in. And now it's time to get back to some more data. Point seven centimeter radio flux is still at 68 solar flux units and here's the last four years of data coming down off of the last solar maximum solar minimum happening in November of 2019 goes x-ray flux is pretty flat lined here we saw it come off the floor a little bit yesterday as that sunspot appeared and then evaporated since yesterday's daily space weather video proton flux is still pretty flat line no surprises there we don't see any large coronal mass ejection striking the magnetosphere ghost magnetometers are showing some high readings here an indication that the north solar polar field has put up some additional strength if you want to look more in depth into things like the solar polar fields sunspot pro uh, cycle progression and all that sort of stuff check out solon.info slash solar next looking at the uh, gong 2 data here is the top view ecliptic plane field plot Keep in mind the date. Oh, it's pretty old. Let's see if I got a newer, newer one here. Three hours and 27 minutes is the age of this data. Quite old here. We are still solidly in the North Pole current sheet. And I would anticipate us remaining there for at least the next 24 hours. You'll see tomorrow when we do the daily space weather video that we're still in the North Pole current sheet. 
shown here in green, South Pole current sheet shown here in red. And from the line of sight field plot, we can see that the B field is not being changed very much. By the way, you live on that B field. That's the interplanetary magnetic field. It's also the field that, that's being measured by the top pane of the real-time solar wind that we show every day. That's the BT, which is really generated via the interaction between the two solar polar fields. We won't get into it more in depth. Have you seen Comet Neowise? Well, now it's for the evening sky. Here's a view for it from it over Mount Washington. Absolutely amazing. A great, great image there from July 14th. And we'll let this scroll. Actually, let me vanish. There we go. And here's an image from the International Space Station on July 5th over the rising sun. A great image there. Here's one from Belarus. And by the way, good luck on your election, Belarus. Shout out to Eugene Bagashov. Here's one over Hungary on July 14th. Here's one over Grand Junction, Colorado. Shout out to our Coloradan viewers. People like, oh, I don't know, David Moriello and Anomalous Howard, etc. Thanks all of y'all for tuning in. Here's another one over an, an Orthodox church in Belarus. Again, good luck on the election there. We're hoping you depose your dictator and elect somebody a little more, a little less Soviet, let's say. Another image over Hungary. So anyway, you're going to be able to see this in the early evening sky now, following sunset. So check it out now in the northwest sky, following sunset. It's not expected to be back for another 6,800 years. And uh, that seems like a little bit too long to wait around for me. What say you? Here's where stuff is located in the solar system. As we move on past Jupiter and more into a Saturn conjunction mode, there's a lot of stuff visible in the early dawn sky. Here's where things will be in a week as Mercury and Venus speed away and the Earth catches up to Mars and starts to drop Jupiter and Saturn. Here's where stuff is above my head. And again, we've got a massive cosmic pileup in the morning. If you're up before dawn, you should be able to see Jupiter and Saturn and the Mars and the Moon and Venus and Mercury all in the same sky. If you've got a telescope, send us images. We'll feature them on the channel. And we've put up another movie recommendation since nobody seems to be responding here. Smashamash.com slash forum in the free for all section has movie recommendations. And we've added another. So we've got now we've got Kelly's Heroes. We've got Little Miss Sunshine. The Old Guard, which was ranked number one on July 14th on Netflix. And the next is Monty Python's Quest for the Holy Grail. Listen, strange women lying in ponds distributing swords is no basis for a system of government. Supreme executive powers derive from a mandate from the masses, not from some fostical aquatic ceremony. I mean, if I went around saying I was an emperor, just because some moistened bink had lobbed a scimitar at me, they'd put me away. Here's the one year of electron flux. And we finally come off this incredible floor that we were on here for over two months. And we're seeing some slightly higher electron flux levels there. There's a three day from the GOES electron flux. And what's going on with the GOES 15, folks? Anybody got any ideas? It's been offline for months since something like February. Let's hope it comes back. Now we've got some electron anomalies down here. Actually, they're more like here. And we'll show you that again. That one happened at about 1400 universal time yesterday, July 15th. So there's that small electron anomaly. We still see some nighttime electron charge ups over places like, oh, the Mediterranean there, as well as uh, the Caribbean and Central America at nighttime. But this is the most significant anomaly right here. Check it out. Very significant electron flux anomaly there over just off the coast of Antarctica. Next, looking at just the ionosphere, this is the entire air column from the thermosphere down. This is just the ionosphere layer, and it's looking very anomalous in discharge, especially on the sun side. The daytime side here, you can see very, very low 
frequency, not even making it above 6 megahertz. Check it out. That's one of the lowest we've ever reported as far as the pressure on the ionosphere from the sun. Next, looking at earthquakes over the past 24, nothing over a 6 magnitude. The largest of the past 24 was this 5.8, which came in at 2139 universal time. A deep quake in Tajikistan at a 4.0 magnitude. A deep quake in Western South America. One of the most likely spots for a large quake, I would say, as we've seen deep quake after deep quake for months and indeed years in Western South America. Please have an earthquake plan if you're located in an earthquake prone zone, such as especially these regions. As those are the places where the most, the highest likelihood of severe damage will happen. And there's that 5.8 located in Panama. Hopefully not too much destruction happened there. Here's a small deep quake at Alaska. And let's go on to volcanoes. Got a, new, a bunch of volcanoes on the list now that are back on the list. Karimsky back to, uh, back to exploding, producing a 10,000 foot ash plume there. Flight level 11,000 at Abiko, Suanuse Jima. Unknown ash cloud, but it exploded. Please don't build a campsite on the lower slopes of Suanuse Jima. Katavar back on the list. Flight level 5,000 there as it explodes. Mount Ibu back on the list. Flight level 6,000 as it, as it explodes. Fuego back on the list. Volcanic emissions have dissipated in satellite imagery. Please don't pole vault the caldera. Regardless, Momotombo in Nicaragua, one I've never heard of has been producing some seismic activity. Has it raised the alert level? They're located, the earthquakes were located on a fault not directly related to the volcano, perhaps having nothing to do with it. And Revenador also exploding, flight level 15,000 there. Please don't do the triple Lindy, made famous by Rodney Dangerfield in the movie Back to School over the caldera. Next, looking at nullschool.net's jet streams, we're looking at flight level 25,000. Here are the jets of the Eastern world. I would note an utterly backwards portion of the jet stream right here where it's blowing east to west. Here are the jets of the Western world. And we see extreme meridional jet stream flow textbook quality once again, as well as jet stream moving east to west over here. So. Anomalies, anomalies, anomalies. Next, looking at pressure cells. We're going to let this advance into the GFS forecast as there is a high pressure dome over the Central Pacific. And I think it's about time to give that one a name. Since meteorologists have been naming things that don't deserve names, we've started naming anticyclones. So since an anticyclone is AC, let's name that one the Anderson Cooper anticyclone, because Anderson Cooper doesn't know jack shit about atmospheric physics either, and I'm sure he's a climate alarmist. The ultra-rich son of a Vanderbilt, Anderson Cooper, knows nothing about atmospheric physics, but will tell you about how much warmer the Earth has been getting, because reasons. Let's move on to see where lightning strikes are happening here at lightningmaps.org. Next time you hear thunder, check out lightningmaps.org. Impress your friends. Freak out your foes. Convince somebody that you're Thor or perhaps Odin. Hey, Enid. Hey, Enid, Oklahoma. There's thunder rolling in. Go out and look west. Go, up, go look northwest if you're in Oklahoma City. You could see sprites up there. Take some time-lapse photography. Hey, Fairview. Hey, Clinton. Hey, Elk City. There's thunder rolling in, and that is a very concentrated cell. So tons of strikes happening. It is a real-time lightning map. It'll allow you to forecast thunder if you weren't aware. Let's move on to water vapor maps. Here is Europe and Africa. Here is the Far East and Oceania. Here's me. Reappearing. The heck? Here's a water vapor map for the Western world. It's the Americas. 
And you can see anti-cyclone Anderson Cooper out here. The Anderson Cooper anti-cyclone. Oh my God, it must be because the CO2 emissions are making the planet so hot that it's cold. As the Northern Hemisphere sees three winters in a row of two standard deviations above the 30 year snowfall mass balance average. Here's what's going on with clouds over the US. We use the NASA GOES Interactive Weather Satellites short wave infrared to see clouds at nighttime. Here's the water vapor map over the US. And of course, we'll zoom in on the Oklahoma Panhandle, since that is the point of most resistance, I guess you could say. Or I guess you could say the point of least resistance. Check out all the Hall current streamers around this system, all these parallel lines that are perpendicular to the mode of the water motion. Why is that, folks? It's because the entire universe is not electric, but some things like the atmosphere are electric as there is some capacitance involved as well as solar induction, magnetism, etc. And there's what's going on with that. That should give you a better indication of where that system's moving. And if you're wondering, it's moving almost due east as these state borders are latitude lines. Next, looking at the, uh, oh man, that's a pretty concentrated storm there. Shout out to northern Oklahoma. You are in the crosshairs. Be prepared for that one. Batten down the hatches. And thanks, Smash Team, for tuning in. Remember to share the content on your social media. Tell your friends. Tell your foes. Tell your science noobs. Tell your science pros. We may have important information to share with all of them. And I may have to shut up. Vanish. By the way, leave us a comment if you haven't yet. We'd like to know your location. Perhaps we'll do a specific weather forecast for you. And I gotta get back to flying the smash plane here. So thanks for flying American Smashways. Please keep your head and arms inside the smash plane at all times. While we show you bonus features such as this intensity gram, which I think is gonna show you zero sunspots. I don't see any dark ombre, do you? Colorized magnetogram showing you the areas to watch, and there are a few here. This one, this one, this one, and this one, which could be forming a parallelogram, which I know, I know people are very scared. It could be a rhombus, and I know shapes are very scary, so please don't get your panties in a bunch over it. Let's look at one more 48-hour video here. That was not the right, I've clicked on that twice in a row now. Here's a 48-hour video of the local yellow dwarf from the SDO. It's 131 angstroms, which is another one of the emission spectra of ionized iron, if you didn't know. All eyes on the southeast of the sun. It's where most of the stuff is happening right now. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, stare at the sun, don't drink, and if you do, don't drive. Attempt to understand the physics. Welcome your friends and your foes to the neo-renaissance. Again, check the links below the video. Attempt to support the channel if you're willing and able, as we would prefer the videos to remain free and publicly visible, although the likelihood of that continuing into next year is getting lower and lower. So may that solar wind be at your back and that atherosclerosis absent from your arteries.